Republican House control has officially begun, and the rules package passed with just one GOP no vote. And according to The Washington Post, House Republicans could steer the U.S. toward a series of fiscal showdowns. A return to, quote, the political brinksmanship that once nearly crippled the economy. Back with us tonight to discuss two friends, Jason Johnson, a politics and journalism professor at Morgan State University, an MSNBC contributor, and Reed Galen, co-founder of The Lincoln Project, who has worked on a number of GOP campaigns, including John McCain, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and George W. Bush. Reed, our friend Tim Miller pointed out that Kevin McCarthy gave the keys to the kingdom to the Freedom Caucus, yet there was just one no vote against the rules package. Does that tell us everything we need to know about the current state of the GOP? Um, I, I think it does, uh, Stephanie. Remember that uh, although most of the membership had lined up behind Kevin McCarthy last week, although it took him 15 ballots, remember that 132 of the 222 Republicans in the U.S. House voted not to certify the 2020 election. I think that's a baseline for where we are and where we're headed uh, as we get going. They wanted the rules. They wanted to get started. And frankly, they didn't want to argue over, you know, what they thought is now being in charge. They just want to get going on the craziness that they've already told us and they've been telling us since last fall. All right. Be careful what you wish for then, Jason. I want to share what Republican Michael Waltz of Florida, what he said on Fox Business earlier today. If we really want to talk about the debt and spending, it's the entitlements program that 70 percent of our entire budget. That $1.7 trillion and defense within that is only 30 percent. So if we want to talk about big reforms, I look forward to hearing that uh, from those folks who are pushing towards the balanced budget. Giddy up. Entitlement reform. The polling is very clear. Americans on both sides of the aisle, senior citizens, do not want you to touch their Social Security. Jason, could this end up being the, the, you know, the return of repealing Roe versus Wade, the dog that caught the car? Be careful what you wish for, Republicans. No, because Republicans have been talking about how they're going to gut entitlement reform and get rid of Social Security since the Bush years. They talk about it every year, and then they go home, and then they find out they can't, and then they go after something else. You can only cut this bone so thin. There's only so much meat you can take off of it. And none of them are going to be touching any of the budget when it comes to national defense, unless we're talking about funding going to Ukraine. Here's the thing, Stephanie. These crazy people are in office. I don't know why anyone is shocked. They ran on crazy. They have no policy. They told us two years ago that they don't even have a platform other than loyalty to Donald Trump. So why is anyone surprised that a group of dime store terrorists masquerading as a political party don't have a plan other than cut things, cut things, cut things? You could go through, you know, Sesame Street or Electric Company and find more sophisticated analyses of what we should be doing with the American budget. So, you know, buckle your safety belt. Anybody who voted for these people, I hope you don't think you're going to keep your entitlements long because that's all they're going to talk about. They are are handing the 2024 election to Democrats if redistricting goes in their favor because they're not going to accomplish anything that's going to make the public happy. Oof, you've got a clear view on that one. Reed, people keep saying Matt Gates played this brilliantly. He has total control now. We might not know officially what Kevin McCarthy gave him, but in order to get Gates to change his vote from no to yes between vote 14 and 15, man, he must have gotten something huge. How do we know that? Right. He didn't have time to go sit down well, with Kevin McCarthy. How do we know that Matt Gates just doesn't want to protect something about himself? Um, because he changed his vote. If he hadn't, um, we'd know that he didn't get what he wanted. But I think also remember that Gates loves to be in front of the camera, in front of the microphones as much as anybody else. I saw a story that said, you know, Matt Gates is now the most hated man in the Republican conference, like mission accomplished for him. That's exactly what he wants. Um, but, you know, again, Gates is the sort of shining star of the insanity. But there's a, rest, there's a lot of the rest of these folks who are right in line with him. Mark Green, who was just elected chairman of the Homeland Security Committee, is, you know, not only pro-Trump, pro-MAGA guy, but also, uh, you know, pro-1-6 uh, big lie guy, you know, maybe had something to do with Brazil. And so I think that these are the folks who are now running everything, as, as Jason said, and, you know, I think the funny thing is I was reading about uh, the new Ways and Means chair, you know, the tax writing committee, and they said, we're going to follow up on the success of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which was what, uh, what Trump got done, you know, that gave massive, massive tax cuts to the wealthy. And what we saw is that that blew a hole in the deficit. 
And so if the Republicans are going to go through all the craziness they're talking about, then they're going to cost jobs in this country. They're going to drive the market into the ground, and they're going to spike interest rates because of a potential default over something like the debt ceiling. They're going to realize that the math doesn't work. Jason, I want to talk about the border. President Biden was in El Paso yesterday. It was his first visit to the border since he took office. And I want to share a bit of my colleague Gabe Gutierrez's reporting. Watch this. Facing mounting pressure over his handling of the growing migrant crisis, today President Biden met with Mexico's president, Andres Manuel López Obrador. The crucial talks ahead of a summit in Mexico City come just one day after President Biden's first trip to the southern border since taking office, where he met with officials in El Paso. But they need a lot of resources and we're going to get them for them. And while he did not meet directly with migrants, he was met with criticism from all sides. Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott handed the president a letter blasting Mr. Biden's lax border policies for encouraging the migrant influx and arguing the visit came two years too late. Has the federal government done enough to prevent this? To prevent, no, absolutely not. They're trying to cover bullet wounds with band-aids. Jason, Biden is obviously facing a ton of criticism from Republicans about the border. Some call it a crisis. Some say it's a problem. Obviously, it's a situation that needs to be resolved. Do you think this trip was a success? I mean, we, we can't determine if it's a success yet, Stephanie, but we do have to hear from Joe Biden what's going to happen differently. I don't want to hear anything from Governor Abbott until he can get the lights on consistently in his own state. And, mm. you know, he's been engaging in obstructionism to actually solving some of the issues that you have at the border. What I want to hear from Joe Biden is we're going to increase the number of asylum judges. What I want to hear from Joe Biden is consistency on how we deal with asylum. At the same time that he's at the border, they're kicking people out of Haiti. You know, Haiti, a country that that we have been directly responsible for oppressing and, and manipulating over years, who had their uh, who had their their uh, president assassinated two years ago. I mean, there are lots of different kinds of people trying to get into this country. Going to the border is nice, but unless you're going to improve the asylum system, unless you're going to make it more efficient, unless you're going to make it more fair, then it is just a photo op. But I don't believe anything the Republican Party is saying because they don't care about solving the problem at the border either. Reid, there is no easy answer for this divisive, complicated issue. How should the president handle it? Well, look, I think that what Jason talks about is once folks get to this side of the border, I think we also have to discuss the security situation in Mexico and South and Central and South America. That's why so many folks are coming, because they're literally running for their lives. Um, you know, many of the countries down there have, you know, at best, you know, rough governance, um, you know, crime is through the roof, the drug cartels are through the roof, um, you know, the, the, the governments are corrupt. So, of course, people don't want to live there. There's no opportunity. They're coming here. I think also that we should talk about the economics of this, which is we are in desperate need of workers, right? We are now functionally at full employment in many places. And a lot of the jobs that Americans are unwilling to do, uh, you know, normally these kinds of folks are coming, willing to come do these jobs because it gives them a first step uh, into a better life. And I don't know of anybody who said, oh, yeah, I'd rather be wherever it is I came from under, you know, being, you know, back in the United States or in the United States looking for a better option. I mean, think about this, Stephanie. One of the most contentious debates of the 1980 Republican primary was between Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush about who was going to have more pro-immigration policies in this country. 42 years, 43 years ago, right, 2007, George W. Bush, John McCain, and Teddy Kennedy almost get to a deal. I was on John McCain's campaign then, and he said, if it cost me my campaign, but we get the job done, it will have been worth it. And that kind of thinking is long gone. It certainly is. We are currently at a moment of divisive rhetoric when what we need more than anything is comprehensive immigration reform. Reed Galen, Jason Johnson, great to have you both here. I really appreciate it.